Well, well, well. Ladies and gentlemen, subscribers and friends and everybody out there, we've just had another earthquake here in Oklahoma. 5.2. Uh, I felt it. I was sitting here going over some things. And it sounded... It actually had sound to it, too. Uh, it sounded like rain blowing into the side of the house you know like just the beginning of rain like drops it in the side of the house and then it felt like it sounded like I was hearing hearing the wind pick up and blow real hard and I thought I heard like some crackly noise and uh, and then I believe I felt the vibration of the floor and everything and then a friend of mine uh, texted me and he he lives in an apartment and he felt it real good over there. And I looked it up uh, on the USGS website also and they had it listed at 5.2. So here we'll look at our map and you can see it was a 5.2. They call it moderate. The depth was 3.11 miles. Saturday, November the 5th, 10.53 p.m. And right now, it is, uh, well, it just passed midnight. I haven't set my clock back yet. So it's been about, well, a little over an hour. Well, I got my flashlight out, and I went and checked around the house I don't see anything that is damaged on my foundation or anything but let's uh, I've already done this and I believe that I can locate pretty close to where it is it looked like it was uh, not as close To the 4.7 last night. Of course, I'm not positive. I haven't had a whole lot of time to go over this, but you can see there's uh, sparks right here. And this is the Prague Lake. So they're within, that's within the area somewhat of the 4.7 last night. So the activity is definitely picked up in my area. And I knew it would. A lot of people doubt and think FOS, but it's not FOS. It's real. It's coming more and more, spreading out to different states throughout the country. And we just got our dose of it. Now, I'm here. This is me, right there. And this is the area near Sparks right there. I have a sister that lives right over here. And I have a brother that lives right over here. And I'll soon have uh, my niece from California and one of her sons is going to uh, move up here. They're, unfortunately her and her husband have divorced. So at least some of them are relocating away from California, but at the moment now, uh, it's not too much better because we seem to be getting higher magnitudes than you right now. So I wanted to ring that about real quick. Everyone in Oklahoma will be alert. The last time I scanned uh, the world view, everything looked, everything seemed to look about like we have or less. But since I, it's how far away is this from me? Well, from here to here is about 90 miles. 
so it looks like it's mm, probably about 90 miles so it felt pretty pretty hard to me uh, that 90 miles so let's go over some little things about aftershocks and we're on Wikipedia this is the definition an aftershock is a smaller earthquake that occurs after a previous large earthquake in the same area of the main shock if an aftershock is larger than the main shock the aftershock is redesignated as the main shock and the original main shock is redesignated as a foreshock aftershocks are formed in the crust around the displaced fault plane this adjust to the effects of the main shock. And then you can go down here and read about the distribution of them. Uh, aftershock size and frequency with time. Amori's law. Both law. Gutenberg-Richter law. And the impact of aftershocks. Aftershocks are dangerous because they're usually unpredictable, can be of a large magnitude. But just remember what it just said. If it's larger than the original one, it gets redesignated. And then the original one, which is then smaller, gets redesignated. And they can collapse buildings that are damaged from the main shock. Bigger earthquakes have more and larger aftershocks, and the sequences can last for years or even longer, especially when a large event occurs in a seismically quiet area. See, for example, the New Madrid Seismic Zone, where events still follow Amori's Law from the main shocks of 1811 to 1812. An aftershock sequence is deemed to have ended when the rate of seismicity drops back to a background level, i.e. no further decay in the number of events with time can be detected. Land movement around the New Madrid is reported to be no more than 0.2 millimeters in a year, in contrast to the San Andreas Fault, which averages up to 37 millimeters a, a year, excuse me, <coughs> a year across California. Aftershocks on the San Andreas are now believed to top out at 10 years. While earthquakes in New Madrid are considered aftershocks nearly 200 years after the 1812 New Madrid earthquake. And then you have your definition of foreshocks and everything. So you can kind of understand what an aftershock is. If you get one bigger, per se, if something comes bigger than this 5.2, a la this 5.2 bigger than the 4.7 last night, then they are redesignated as to earthquake, aftershock, foreshock. And this is just a kind of a picture of our moon tonight. Uh, kind of had a little, the sky was fairly clear. We had some cloudage in the afternoon. And we've got a few tonight, and it looked just kind of, oh, kind of strange and hazy. So I snapped one. I don't know how many people have clear skies and how many people have hazy skies tonight. Uh, if anyone listened to Francis and his radio show, he had Hoagland on, and Hoagland had some interesting ideas about the moon. We'll have to see with 2005 YE55 what happens. Well, apparently it may be harder to view than what we thought. So naked eye viewing, well, that may not be possible then. So telescopes up. We're going to need images. Also, we made some reference that if it hit the moon. Uh, it wouldn't majorly affect us that the frag small small fragments would fall back to the earth but wouldn't hurt anything like I say we'll have to see now the video that I posted right before this one was about 
Israel may bomb Iran. And I seem to have hit a nerve with that in the things I showed and the things I say and the things that are true. Because if you'll read them comments, you will see what I didn't expect. I did not expect that, actually. But now I know. So many negative comments about God and Israel. So I'm going to say it in a video so I don't have to write it all the time to whoever's doing this when they comment. Your comments are fine. Even your negative views. I'll still speak with you and comment and try and educate you and turn you around because you're wrong in your thinking as far as God goes in Israel. I will not allow you to say anything bad about God or Israel. You will not come and you will not cuss and make mockery of our Lord. Nor will you come and say the same types of things about Israel. I already banned one guy because he used the F-bomb. I let him get away with his comments. I kept conversing with him for a while. But he was getting severely brutal. So when he did that and he linked it with the Lord, He's gone. So I'm warning you, don't never come to my channel and say bad things about God. Or I will remove you, ban you, and that's that. I just wanted to come on and let everybody know about the 5.2 earthquake in Oklahoma. And I will be up for a few hours, be watching this. And if I hear of anything else, I will come on and let you know. But uh, more than likely, there's probably been some aftershocks that we haven't felt, but they haven't been posted. Uh, I will keep a definite eye on it, as, like I said, I'm right here. But God bless everyone and keep them safe. I uh, hope the rest of the weekend turns out fine. And We'll talk to you soon. Be aware. We know what's coming next week. The YU-55 thing. The Pacific Wave thing. I think we're going to be okay, though. So, let's all stick together and hang with each other. Keep each other informed. Good night and God bless.